Somewhere in the neon heart of Tokyo, a machine roared skyward. No wings, no cockpit, only a rider and thrust. Cameras rolled, and within hours, Chinese aerospace forums lit up. In the Pentagon, engineers replayed the clip, asking the same question we will explore tonight. How and why it matters now. Whispers at Detroit Auto Show. September 2022. Detroit's vast exhibition hall fell silent when the XTURISMO hoverbike glided above polished floors during the North American International Auto Show. Built by Tokyo-based ALI Technologies, the 300-kilogram craft ran a 100-kilometer-per-hour test pass as stunned U.S. automotive engineers huddled for a closer look. Minutes later, a Chinese delegation hurried forward, measuring sound and vortex trails. The moment marked the first time Japan's personal flight dream faced its global rivals on home turf, and it left them speechless. Hoverbike takes off at Fuji. A year earlier, October 26, 2021, the same machine had skimmed the tarmac of Fuji Speedway. Against Mount Fuji's silhouette, the bike hovered three meters high, floating for two full minutes while executives in tailored suits grinned like kids at an air show. Reuters footage captured prop wash swirling fallen leaves as race team mechanics, more used to supercars, cheered the first public proof that Japan could lift a rider without wings. Investors smelled a market, regulators smelled a headache. Either way, flight had left the track. Engineers in shock. Backstage at Detroit, a NASA propulsion specialist traced the craft's twin rotor eddies on a tablet, whispering, if they tame the noise, we're looking at commuter flight. Nearby, a Shenzhen drone designer filmed every bolt. The South China Morning Post uploaded the scene within hours, headline flashing Japanese flying bike debuts in US. The clip racked up millions of mainland views overnight, sparking forum debates on ducted fan versus open rotor safety and a race to file competing patents before Monday. Desert Sky Trial amid the crimson dunes outside Abu Dhabi. A prototype marked Exturismo lifted off a makeshift pad, riding thermal currents above the desert floor. Emirati civil aviation observers timed a 40-minute hovering endurance, then shook hands with Japanese test pilots wearing heat-reflective flight suits. The Asian Sky Group later reported the demo as a prelude to Gulf police rescue trials. Sand roared, camels scattered, and global headlines declared the world's first commercial flying bike had conquered a new continent. Star Wars dream made real. Fans called it a speeder bike. Business Insider photo spreads showed black carbon panels and red LEDs echoing Imperial Scouts from Return of the Jedi. Behind the showmanship lay hard numbers. 40-minute flight window, 99.8 kilometers per hour top speed, and a sticker price north of 500,000 US dollars. Japanese engineers shrugged at cost. Early adopters buy supercars too. What mattered was proof of control, algorithms balancing six screaming rotors while wind gusts battered the frame. Childhood fantasy had become line item tech. A NASDAQ debut. Airwinds Technologies, parent of ALI, rang the NASDAQ bell via a SPAC merger valued at 600 million US dollars. Wall Street screens rolled B roll of the hoverbike roaring over Tokyo Bay. Analysts debated whether personal air mobility could scale, yet retail investors piled in on the symbol AWIN. Bloomberg's ticker scrolled Japan flying bike maker soars. For a brief, euphoric quarter, the jetpack dream floated on public capital, proof that finance, like physics, can lift heavy dreams when momentum is right. Chinese reverse engineering rush. Across the East China Sea, Shanghai-based T-Shab Tech, already chasing EV toll glory, scrutinized every public patent filing linked to Xturismo. Their engineers compared duck profiles, material choices, even battery chemistries, noting elegant weight-saving tricks. Though T-Sab stayed silent on direct copying, media tracked a spike in composite rotor orders from the same suppliers used by the Japanese original. In the graduate labs of Tsinghua University, students 3D printed scale models. Proving innovation is contagious and sometimes borderless. U.S. test pilots react. 
Meanwhile, U.S. experimental aviation circles invoked an older legend, David Maiman's 2015 jetpack flight around the Statue of Liberty. Seeing Japan's bike hover with twice the endurance, veteran test pilots admitted grudging respect. Different philosophy, one said, but the control loop is gorgeous. Advisory boards at DARPA flagged the Japanese PID algorithms for study. Agility in tight urban canyons could suit special ops insertions, where classic jet belts run too hot and loud. The Pacific Tech race had a new lap, Gravity's Yokohama Flash. Back in 2019, long before Detroit, Gravity Industries had wowed baseball fans by rocketing over Yokohama Stadium. That minute-long jet suit sprint, seen by millions online, sowed the seed for homegrown research grants. Japanese TV replayed it nightly, urging local firms not to be left behind. When Ex Turismo later lifted off, journalists recalled the jet suit cameo as prophecy fulfilled. Japan wouldn't buy foreign wings, it would craft its own and invite the world to watch in order. Or self-defense forces watch closely. By 2024, the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force quietly hosted tabletop studies on personal propulsion kits for rapid island reinforcement. Officers reviewed footage from the Detroit and Abu Dhabi tests, noting payload limits and acoustic signatures. They also assessed U.S. Marines' experiments with gravity jet suits off HMS Queen Elizabeth. Classified memos concluded hoverbikes could ferry medics across tsunami-flooded towns faster than any jeep. For a country of mountains and islands, vertical freedom is more than showmanship. It's strategy. Hypersonic ambitions collide. July 2024, ATLA released its first hypersonic glide weapon test video. Though unrelated to personal flight, the clip underscored Japan's rising comfort with cutting-edge propulsion. Engineers who once debugged hoverbike firmware now filed into missile labs, carrying lessons on heat shielding and composite rotors. In a twist, personal mobility, R&D, fed national defense breakthroughs. The same materials that dampened rotor vibration could clad a glide vehicle nose cone. Flight, large or small, shares one unforgiving master. Physics, jet suit race, stakes rise. Dubai Harbor hosted the inaugural jet suit race series. Among eight pilots, one wore a suit featuring Japanese-made miniature turbo compressors previously tested on the XTURISMO program. The hybrid design clinched third place, prompting race commentators to hail Japan's stealth influence on global jetpack sports. Spectators gasped as racers banked over water, engines shrieking, sponsors salivated, human flight had gained a league, and Japan's fingerprints were on the podium hardware, even if its flag wasn't. SkyDrive's first liftoff. August 25, 2020, a white test cage rose above Toyota test field. The SD-03 hovered four minutes, eight rotors humming like an electronic hive, while engineers watched in stunned quiet. It was Japan's first public crewed EVTOL flight, a proof that a flying car was no longer manga fantasy. US blogs called it the Kitty Hawk moment of Tokyo. In Beijing, design students replayed the clip frame by frame, hunting secrets hidden in the downdraft. Japan publishes flight roadmap, Nine months later, Meaty released an advanced air mobility roadmap. The timeline was bold. Cargo drones nationwide by 2025, passenger hops in every prefecture before 2030, and personal craft. Yes, hoverbikes soon after. The document read like science fiction, turned checklist, mapping rules for airworthiness, pilot licensing, even emergency parachutes. It challenged domestic industry with a single dare. Build the future before someone else does. Investors noticed. So did ministries in Washington and Beijing. Vertiport blueprints released. Japan's transport ministry published interim Vertiport design guidelines. Pages of diagrams showed rooftop pads shaped like cherry blossoms, noise buffer walls, and flood-resistant pylons for coastal towns. The message was clear. Cities must prepare vertical gateways just as they once paved streets. Urban planners scrambled to mark sky lanes over rivers and railway yards. Without a single vehicle certified, 
The country was already drawing the parking spots. Suzuki opens drone factory. SkyDrive and Suzuki formed Skyworks Inc. in Iwata, converting an old motorcycle line into EVTOL production. Goal, 100 craft a year, beginning 2024. Robots that once welded car doors now pressed carbon fiber ribs. Seasoned auto workers took courses on rotor balancing. Reporters watched the first silver chassis roll past a banner reading, We build dreams, not exhaust. Competitors realized Japan's supply chain muscle had just entered the race. Osaka Expo test soars. In 2025, the SkyDrive SD05 lifted off the brand new Expo Vertiport on Yumashima Island. Cameras caught its 12 rotors glittering against Osaka Bay, the craft tracing a slow figure eight for media day. Organizers promised daily flights when World Expo gates open next spring. Kids pointed, executives took notes, and local taxi unions asked how to book slots. The countdown to practical air taxis suddenly felt very real. Hexa steals the spotlight. One week later, Texas-based Lyft aircraft flew its single-seat Hexa at the same Expo site. Eighteen tiny motors sang a high-pitched chorus as the spider-legged craft climbed above cheering visitors. Marubeni, its Japanese partner, announced summer trial flights for tourists. No pilot license needed after a quick simulator class. The demo proved foreign innovators were ready to surf Japan's new sky rules, raising the stakes for homegrown teams. Chinese type approval shock. China's Aviation Authority granted the world's first passenger EV toll type certificate to Ehang's EH216 S. Overnight, social media buzzed Beijing had legalized autonomous air taxis before the US or Japan. Tokyo analysts pored over the 1,200 page dossier, comparing it with Japan's draft standards. Suddenly, Certification wasn't a hypothetical finish line. It was a race already underway, with China one lap ahead. FAA rewrites the rulebook. In 2024, the FAA issued a new powered lift pilot framework, carving a legal niche for aircraft that behave like both helicopters and airplanes. The US military cheered. Civilian inventors exhaled. Japanese regulators studied the 300-page order noting references to single control station craft, the exact class into which hover bikes fit. Global standards were converging, and with them, a clearer path to international sales. Jetson wows Oshkosh crowds. Midsummer 2023, Experimental Week at EAA AirVenture. A lime green Jetson 1 darted over the runway, tilting like a hummingbird, its pilot steering with a gamer-style joystick. No cockpit glass, just wind, and adrenaline. Spectators gasped. Some searched for pre-order links on their phones. The ultralight classification meant no license, no medical, only courage. Japanese vloggers on site sent videos home, warning that the personal flight market was about to explode. Hydrogen mile breaker. Joby Aviation's hydrogen electric demonstrator flew 523 miles over Marina, California, landing with only water vapor trailing. The record, more than tripled typical battery range and hinted at zero emission intercity hops. Japanese aerospace forums buzzed. Could the same fuel cells shrink into a hover bike? Researchers ran numbers. The energy looked promising. If weight fell another 10%, the propulsion frontier had moved again. Fuel cell drone gets Japanese nod. H3 Dynamics and Nexty Electronics announced Japan's first certified hydrogen drone flight. Though only a six-rotor cargo craft, its 15-hour endurance stunned disaster relief planners. Reports suggested the fuel stack could migrate to crude EVTOL prototypes within three years. For hover bike designers battling battery limits, the news felt like a gift from the future. Kyoto's battery breakthrough. Toyota and Kyoto University revealed a fluoride ion solid state battery boasting triple the energy density of today's lithium cells. Lab photos showed coin cell prototypes glowing purple under X rays. The team predicted aviation grade packs before 2035, yet venture funds hurried to lock in rights now. If the chemistry scales, a 40 minute hover could become two hours, long enough for real commutes.
Certification gridlock hits airlines. October 2024, Sirium reported that four Japanese carriers, JAL, ANA, Marubeni, SkyDrive, postponed planned air taxi services, citing safety approval delays. Demo flights would continue, but paying passengers had to wait. Stock prices dipped. Forums cried, regulation choke. The episode reminded everyone that engineering is only half the battle. Paperwork can ground even the sleekest machine. Xpeng lands in Vegas. January 2025, CES visitors jammed the Xpeng Aero HT booth to see a modular flying car that folds into an electric SUV. Chinese engineers explained how the air module detaches, lifts off, and docks again, like a sci-fi backpack. U.S. analysts filmed every hinge. Japanese firms counted pre-orders. The display proved that personal flight is no longer a single country dream. It's a global showdown. Expo panic above Osaka Bay, April 27, 2025. An expectant crowd at World Expo 2025 craned their necks as Lyft Aircraft's single-seat hexa rose into the salty breeze. Suddenly, a carbon fiber prop guard sheared away, tumbling like black confetti toward the landing zone. The pilot eased down safely, but organizers slammed the brakes on every flying car show until inspectors could trace the fault. Overnight, U.S. safety boards requested telemetry. Chinese drone forums dissected video frames. One dropped bolt, reminded the world that gravity still calls the final shot. Jet suit medics blitz the tide. Seven months ago, a Gravity Industries team staged a rapid water rescue drill on Britain's storm-lashed coast. Engines shrieked. A pilot skimmed whitecaps at 70 kilometers per hour, landing beside a dummy casualty in 40 seconds, 15 times faster than a lifeboat. The clip rocketed across Japanese social media, where disaster relief planners imagined alpine and tsunami deployments. U.S. Coast Guard trainers replayed it too, tallying turbine thrust against downdraft spray. If speed saves lives, this Iron Man medicine may rewrite first response playbooks. In Skytech, every triumph meets turbulence, yet each setback sharpens the next leap. Humanity keeps strapping on rockets and daring the clouds. Thanks for watching.